Okay, welcome back. I'm going to go over some of the charging parameters that I've been working with over the past several days since hooking this Chins 12 volt 300 amp hour battery, lithium ion phosphate battery, and getting it up and running. It's been doing quite well. I've just been struggling wrapping my head around the various parameters <clears throat> available to me on this EP Ever Tracer. 40 amp charge controller and programming it with my uh, MT50 here. And as you can see right now, I'm at the end of my charging day. Half an amp coming in, 13.4 volts. So it's in good shape. And I will go over with what I've come up with and where to go from here. So you can see right here, <clears throat> these are the parameters that when I inquired with Chins, the company that makes these batteries, what parameters they suggest I use. So they, they want the charging limit voltage at 14.6, over voltage disconnect at 15, volts over voltage reconnect 14.2 float charging 13.8 and then the rest of them down below and then right here are my available settings on the ep ever you've got sealed gel and flooded which are all preset to where you don't have to do any programming going through the mt50 just find out which one you want and and click it on and it will take care of everything for you. I've been trying in the past few days to use a user setting to set my own parameters in just a little bit different configuration than any of these presets. The main reason being is I don't, don't want to have uh, my float charge uh, be very high. Now, like in this one on sealed, uh, you can see that the float charge is set for 13.8. On gel, it's 13.8. Flooded, it's 13.8. And, of course, you don't want anything that would have an equalized charge to it either. So, on the sealed, it's there's an equalization, and on the flooded as well. So, really, the the gel setting parameters work pretty good. Uh, with all of the parameters except for the charge or the uh, float charge is still a little bit high. Now I have read on many of the forums that most of the people using this type of battery don't like to have 13.8 as a float. They feel that's a little high. They suggest uh, most of them suggest 13, 6 or under. But actually, Chins recommends a 13.8 volt float. So based on that and what their parameters are, you could set the standard gel battery voltage settings just automatic on your MT50 and you should be fine. So I'll go back to the MT50 here, and I'll try and get this into focus for you. And we'll go down to control parameters. Now I actually have this set, as you can see, on gel, the size of the battery, and then we can scroll down the rest of the settings. Temperature compensation coefficient minus three. Over voltage disconnect 16, charge limit 15. And we'll scroll down all of them. Now you can see here, which is very important, if you go with the gel setting, there is no equalized charge. And that's precisely what we want with uh, the lithium batteries. We don't want an equalized char uh, charge because we don't have to be worrying about any desulfation like you would with uh, lead acid. And then here 
my boost charge 14-2, float 13-8. Scroll through the rest of these so you can see what they're set at. This is just in the pre-program, but I will show you on the boost time, which I was, I didn't think I'd be able to, but the boost time can be manipulated on this gel setting. None of the other settings can be, but the boost time can be, which is good because I didn't want to really boost it at 14.2 for two hours. So let me quickly go back to, to there. So I was able to adjust the boost time to just go with 10 minutes for now. I had a heck of a time trying to get uh, my settings correct using the uh, user uh, setting, which I, I never really got it to where I liked it. So there again, I've just got the last of the light coming in today on the solar panels, only getting a 0.3 amps in, holding it 13.3 volts. Now, I want to say chasing the voltage uh, by watching what's on the MT50 is not the most accurate way of seeing it. I mean, I go down here and re-verify what, what uh, I'm getting on the terminals themselves, and it's it's usually a little bit lower, of course. And, and of course, I've always been running my inverter throughout the past few days, too. So, uh, But I'm getting a really good understanding now of where this thing is running. I will say that any of you that are using this EP ever, uh, if you're trying to do it by itself, uh, it's a big headache. Uh, make the investment, get the MT50, because it's just much easier to program. It can be done on this main unit, but unless you are extremely gifted in running through these parameters, I wouldn't even mess with it. The MT50 makes it uh, much more of a user-friendly experience. And even on somebody who, and I'm not all that experienced, so, uh, but it makes all the difference in the world to be able to scroll to exactly where you want to and, and see what's going on. But you cannot you cannot uh, move through these parameters like this and change them quickly on on the uh, EP ever itself. So everyone is use, using this type of a device that which which just plugs in right here. So it's super easy. And I'll go back <clears throat> control parameters one more time. And sorry, I'm not able to hold this real still and do all of this, but I think you're getting the idea uh, of what at least I'm comfortable with. So just to reiterate, I've decided to go ahead with the, the gel setting for now. And I pretty much get all of the uh, parameters that I want, the most importantly, at least for my usage, is to make sure no equalized charge. You don't want to do that. Float, I think I would like to actually be able to drop that float down a little bit, although, like I said, it's kind of a, a hard thing to decide on because that's the float that Chins wants you to be at is 13.8. And then if you go onto the, the solar forums, everyone's saying that that's maybe a little bit high. But one of the things that I don't have to worry about uh, too much because of the environment I live in, I get a lot of, of uh, intermittent clouds throughout the day. So, you know, it was all I could do today to get up to uh, the charge that I did. And it didn't quite make it today to uh, the, 
uh, to float. Uh, and I, I want to say too, also that, you know, it takes a while while you're charging. I saw as many as, um, oh, about 19 amps was about the high point I saw coming in today. And once you get up to about 13, five in your charging process, I mean, it just takes a while to push through that. It really does. I, I saw it as high as about 13.7 a couple of times today, but that's with about 19 amps coming in. And then you know, I started getting cloud cover, and, and I thought about putting the uh, little charger here back on it just to go ahead and push it up there to uh, watch all the parameters kick in on the charge controller, but then I uh, just decided not to. I just let the, the solar push it in all day and see what where I got to. So... Anyway, that's where I'm at right now. I'm going to keep messing with it. I've been kind of obsessed with this for the past few days. And now I'm just ready to uh, just let the charge controller do what it can. See, see what uh, I can get by with on the kind of uh, sunshine that I get during the days. I'll say during uh, the nighttime usage, I've been letting it run all night. And I've never seen it drop below 13.2 uh, volts. Running loads, never. Running TV, lights, it has just never dropped below 13.2. Uh, not even for a second. Um, and th th there it is, basically no power coming in. I am running an inverter right now, no other uh, discernible load just pulling about an amp off of that and it's just holding rock steady. Now even when I go to the TV and lights and just normal nighttime activity, it never drops below 13.2. All right, if anyone has any more suggestions uh, or different experience around these units, let me know. I'd be happy to throw that into the equation because I'm learning as I go and just wanting to pass it on. All right, talk to you later.